I'm Frank Malloy live at Emerson River Park. The scene a whole lot different as I just told you than it was 25 years ago. Short distance from here, the Macon Water Treatment Plant, the old Macon Water Treatment Plant that got flooded out. And not that far over this way, Delano Drive, a street that was devastated by the flood of 94. But Macon and Bibb County certainly not the only area that felt the effects of Tropical Storm Alberto. It was widespread in Monroe County. Well, they had to face the swollen Tawaliga River. Parts of Houston County disappeared under the flow from five compromised dams, Houston Lake, Leisure Lake, and Lake Joy. Near Cordill, people below Lake Blackshear were forced to evacuate, and the poor folks in Montezuma drowned beneath both the Flint River and Beaver Creek. In all, 31 people were killed across the state of Georgia. Most of those deaths occurred in South Georgia, near Americus, where the Flint River crested at an amazing 35 feet. Now downtown Montezuma suffered a couple of catastrophic events from the flood of 94 and from tropical storm Alberto, which was no friend to the people in Montezuma. Suzanne Lawler shows us how in some ways the scars and the successes from back then are still very much evident today. It was just breathtaking. You know, it happened on that morning of July 6. It was such a time of um, unreal surreal things happening. It was a horror because you could just see it creeping up and up and up. You know, it was like, when is it going to stop? They run boats up and down here, all right? Um, I was probably, at this point, probably about knee deep in water. Roy Yoder worked as a firefighter back then, and little did he know the situation would get worse. The town is flanked by two water sources, Beaver Creek and the Flint River. Beaver Creek flooded first. It come around the banks on the north side of the levee along the CSS railroad track. Then the Flint flooded, all right, and that was the northern stuff, and then it come over the levee and filled up everything. If you look at the bridge, that was covered with water. The muddy water infiltrated dozens of businesses, including Joy Rawls' shop. The memories still haunt her. Uh, it was horrible. It looked like a mud bomb had gone off, and it had a terrible smell, and it was just mud splattered everywhere. And they actually took in a, like a little small bobcat into the store and would just scoop up the clothing and anything that we had that was all, it was all over the floor. Most didn't have flood insurance. During that time, there were over 67 businesses that were involved. 43 homes, uh, people were left homeless. There were three churches that were destroyed. Dot Barker is with the Chamber of Commerce. After the flood, the Citizen in Georgia published a souvenir edition of pictures and comments that were made and things that were done by those that were involved. She still has mementos that marked the monumental time in Montezuma history, a turning point of sorts of what things look like today. Well, it's been very tough. It, it, you know, right after the flood, it did try to come back and we reopened after months and months because they did all the, redid the sidewalks and had landscaping done. And it did try to come back, but it's never been the same as it was. Only four businesses survived from that time, but one, Josie's restaurant in some ways is still suffering. The building is caving in. Well, we're not sure, but I got a suspicion that it had a lot to do with it with all the water, you know, that the town had. I'm pretty sure it did some damage to a lot of the buildings. When the angry tide receded, Montezuma had the mammoth task of putting itself back together. They improved the levees, upgraded the pump station, and decided to celebrate the resilient nature Okay, let's have a Beaver Creek Festival. Let's have a duck race to draw in tourists, to draw in visitors to come to see where the flood level was. That duck race still happens today. And although the now docile Beaver Creek and Flint River showed their strength that fateful summer, Montezuma folks say they're stronger. We're thriving and trying, and that's the the key. Suzanne Lawler, 13 WMAZ News. And the 25th 
Beaver Creek Duck Race happens this October. Now, another significant thing happened in Montezuma. In addition to all the flooding, Southern Frozen Foods plant caught fire. It burned for a couple of days, and it took that long for firefighters to get it under control because obviously huge logistic issues getting trucks there and also getting enough water to put on the fire. Many of you remember the flood in months that followed very well. Let's take a look at how some of you coped with the damage. Harold says saw sheets of asphalt wash up, and all you could see of the Tussahawk Creek Bridge was about six inches of one corner of the bridge rail. He says he went down later and measured the water marks on the trees, over 15 feet. Karen remembers losing everything she had in a storage unit off Riverside Drive and didn't have water for over a month. But she says, thankfully, SunTrust rented rooms for employees to shower. Mark shared this photo with us. That's the Piggly Wiggly on Pianona. He says he shopped there the night before the flooding started. He remembers water flowing over 247, higher than some hotel buildings. Meredith shares an anniversary with the flood. She was born right in the middle of it. She says the Red Cross brought her family diapers and bottled water since they were considered flood victims.